Right. Hello. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about drugs. So I'm not talking about the soft stuff, I'm talking about the hard stuff, such as LSD, ecstasy, mushrooms, stuff like that. All these drugs, um, according to the Drug Enforcement Administration, are Schedule One drug substances or chemicals, are defined as drugs with no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. Schedule One drugs are the most dangerous drugs of all the drugs scheduled with potential severe, potentially severe psychological or physical dependence. So currently in the United States, the FDA does not allow for testing of these drugs. So my main claim is Schedule One restriction limits access to drugs for research purposes in the United States. And my other claims are some Schedule One drugs have been linked to treating psychological problems. And also Schedule One drugs have the potential to update or create different types of medicine for illnesses and currently have no known peers. So for my first secondary claim, some Schedule One drugs have been linked to treating psychological problems. Um, mushrooms, for example, they, um, they, contain, they contain psilocybin to help relieve symptoms of obsessive compulsive disorder, which is also known as OCD, and has also been linked to help with depression. In a study in London by Dr. Robert, Robin Robert Paris, he found that mushrooms were not addictive, the psilocybin within it, and um, he says that it helped um, lower the depression and it also um, helped contain um, OCD within people. Um, David Nutt, which was, um, he was interviewed by CNN, he is also the former drug advisor for the United Kingdom says that with further research of mushrooms, that it could be, um, it won't be the mainstream drug to help treat depression or any of these, but it can also be an alternative to serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which is which does not work in all people that use it. Also, LSD, it alleviates end of life anxiety in patients with terminal illnesses. And that's quoted from the Huffington Post. Back in 2014, um, a group of scientists within Switzerland um, had 12 patients and they discovered, they split them, the patients into two groups of six and they administered six, um, six people 200 micrograms of LSD and then they administered the other group of six um, 20 micrograms and the group that took 200 micrograms of LSD said that their anxiety was gone after they used it and um, the people that took the 20 micrograms said they had worse anxiety due to the drug. And the scientists also recorded <coughs> that there was no prolonged negative effects on the drug after use. Um, and LSD hasn't been <coughs> has not been tested since um, since 1964. It hasn't been 40 years since it's been tested. And then the 2014 was the most recent study on it. So for my secondary claim, Schedule One drugs have the potential to update or create different types of medicine for illnesses that have no cure. Ecstasy, also known as MDMA, has um, anti-cancer properties within the drug. Um, a modified form of the drug, Ecstasy, has the potential to effectively treat patients with leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma, according to an article in, in the investigation of new drugs. Scientists from the University of Birmingham, United Kingdom, discovered that ecstasy can suppress the development of white blood cells, well, white cancer cells within the human body. And currently, there are no um, drugs to test on cancer patients because the dosage needed of the ecstasy contains too much toxic, um, toxic um, ingredients in there that it will kill people if it was taken. Also, um, mushrooms. Um, there has been a study that says that mushroom can help people with smokers addiction and alcoholism. The Center for Disease Control estimates that there are about 42 million um, smokers in the United States alone. And Professor Roland Griffin from John Hopkins University of Medicine used psilocybin to treat smoking addiction and received, and received an 80% success rate in people who, um, who used it and they actually ended up quitting smoking after six months. And they said that um, with further studies that they, this could be potentially faster than using nicotine um, patches and putting on your arm. And so overall, most of these drugs, they were made illegal in the 70s because back then it was like everyone during the hippie age were using these drugs and they were abusing this drug. And no one thought that t today, by the time, like 40 years, 50 years later, that we would have the technology in order to make these scientific discoveries and to um, synthesize certain materials outside of drugs to potentially help us. And, 
and because of this, we work in America, since we are the leading, <coughs> um, we are the leading, we have um, the, we the world in medicine research since 1996, so for about 18 years now. So because of this, Schedule 1 restrictions limits us to access to drugs for research purposes in the United States. Thank you. Um, if you guys don't want me holding up these cards to make you nervous, let me know. Because I know it's kind of distracting. Well, the subject area is clear. The contents are previewed. What's missing is the uh, background information that tells us that the Schedule One <coughs> drug limitation is keeping research from being done on these sorts of things. Um, I, you're, I think you're taking it as a given, but uh, you, you report some studies. I know that uh, the two studies you reported were based in England, uh, but uh, I'm familiar with some studies that are using LSD here in the United States, so I'm not quite sure that you have demonstrated that uh, the rules are creating the problem here. Uh, it may simply be that uh, you know we've reached a point where we're looking for all kinds of additional choices and these are the ones that are starting to show up. Not that this, this has suppressed our discovery of these treatments for 40 plus years or 50 plus years, however long it's been since uh, they've been classified as Schedule One drugs. So I think that that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, the stuff about uh, that uh, LSD has been linked to, um, or not LSD, yeah, I guess LSD, you had the end of life stuff, that's the Swiss, the Swiss study. Um, I, you know, they got a little bit, they, they felt worse, they got a lot more, they didn't feel worse. Uh, that's, you know, if they hadn't had any, what difference would it be? You know, where's, where's the comparative data on that particular point? That's a little bit odd. The mushroom issue, uh, there's got to be an explanation why they can't, can't do the um, chemical extract from the mushrooms. Is that the issue? Because uh, if, if they can't, then I think you've got a good argument here that suggests that this is uh, blocked by the Schedule One classification. But if they can, then I'm wondering why it is that we have to have mushrooms uh, available to do this and we can't just use the chemical extract. Uh, you say there hasn't been research on LSD since 1964, and then you present a study from 2014 that suggests that there is some research on this. So that just feels a little bit inconsistent on the data, and I think it goes back to that other point that I was mentioning, that you need to have a little bit more background on what impact the Schedule One classification has had on the research process. I'm sure that there are people out there who would say that it's been substantial, but um, it feels a little bit sketchy here uh, at this point. Uh, I thought you cited the UK studies pretty well. You give us an explanation about what they're looking for. Uh, the potential benefits are listed. I'm not sure how you know, why the one is superior to the nicotine patches, for instance, except that it might be faster. That's pretty speculative, but, you know, and people who are terminally ill, I guess if the LSD is not killing them, they might as well be, you know, taking another kind of trip, you know, to avoid, you know, the anxiety that goes along with that. That's, a, that's an interesting study. It just feels a little bit underdeveloped here, so... Uh, I think you've got some good points in the speech. They just need uh, a little bit more research, and like I said, the premise, I think, needs to be developed more. All right, thank you.